All right, this is my fish tier list. Uh, we watched Tier Zoo make a fish tier list, and not only did he leave out a lot of stuff, I felt that his opinions were a little, a little bit weird. Uh, but it's since been pointed out to me the way that he looks at it. So he looks at it from a video game perspective and talks about how all of the builds, all of the different fish relate to each other. Okay. And then also um, talks about how the like viability doesn't necessarily matter uh, as a group. The viability of an individual matters. So I'm going to try and do that as well. Focus on like individual adaptations, how it affects the individual. And I'm just going to try and like look at each fish from the most objective, adaptive perspective, basically how good they are at their job. First on the list is the Plecostomus. If you don't know what a Pleco is, it's a fish that a lot of people get in their aquariums as like algae eaters or cleaners or something like that. And they start off really small, at least the common species of Pleco. And then they get really fucking huge just absolutely massive. And people don't realize this, pet stores do not sell them correctly. And uh, yeah, a lot of people get screwed over by having plecos as babies, and then they outgrow their tank, and then people don't know what to do with them. And so a lot of like the big tanks and fish stores you'll see are just filled with giant plecos. Pleco is definitely not F tier. They, they have, some, they're invasive, um, they do a lot of stuff. Because they're in the aquarium trade, their population's pretty good. Uh, but they also don't have anything particularly unique. Their way of reproducing is a little weird. And, um, they're a little picky about everything. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and put them in like C tier as like a general, we'll just start there. We're gonna, we're gonna edit stuff later. Next up is tuna. Tuna, if you guys don't know, are the fastest fish, I think. Absurdly fast to the point where if you guys know the mantis shrimp, the mantis shrimp can punch and create cavitation bubbles, which are basically like small pockets in the water that are like the temperature of the surface of the sun that then explode. Uh, tuna can do that if they swim too fast. Uh, tuna actually go out of their way to not swim too fast in order to avoid literally fucking explosions on their tail. They are too fast for their own good. Uh, but anyways, I think tuna are about as adapted as it gets as a fish. I mean, they're not, they're not S tier, you know, they're not top of the list, but like they have a pretty amazing adaptation going super fast, right? And uh, although they're preyed on pretty heavily by humans, that also gives us an incentive to protect them. You have to take into account how humans feel about the fish, gives us an, a, a reason to protect them. All right, next up, lump suckers. Now you guys know I have a, I have a, fond uh, place in my heart for lump suckers for these little guys. In fact, I did an entire presentation on them. I do love lump suckers. Problem is, although that they are very uh, well adapted for aquaculture environments, in the wild, I don't know how adapted they are. In aquaculture, lump suckers are S tier. In, uh, on cuteness, lump suckers are S tier, for sure, right? Like they provide absolutely so much to salmon farming. They've totally revolutionized salmon farming. But in the wild, uh, this pains me. I want you guys to know that this pains me, but I'm gonna have to put them, I'm gonna have to put them in B tier. I'm gonna have to put them in B tier. If it was based on aquaculture, it'd be S tier. If it was based on cuteness, it would be S tier. But I, I have to, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yes, get it out. Tell me I'm ugly and I'm a terrible human being. Next up, my favorite fish. I'm gonna go in letting you know that I have bias. Coelacanth are my favorite fish. Um, they've been my favorite fish for a while. I really love coelacanth, like everything about them. They've been my background. They've been um, just a huge part of like my life and me growing and me liking fish and the specific things that I'm interested in. And uh, so it's gonna be really hard to not be biased in favor of them, but I'm gonna try my best. They are cave dwellers. They are well adapted for their environment. They do fit a pretty unique niche. There's not really anything like them, which I think is really interesting. I think that in the era where coelacanth were big, where that whole family was surviving, a an individual species of coelacanth wouldn't be anything special. But nowadays, being like one of the only surviving fish of that family, they're filling a very unique niche that I think is beneficial to them. But they're not thriving. 
but they're also not going extinct, you know? They're kind of as middle of the road as it gets. So I think I have to put them in C tier. And because Plecos, only because Plecos have the help of humans, you know, breeding them specifically to create a larger population, I'm going to have to put them below Plecos. And that pains me. They are my favorite fish by far. Next up is Cod. So if you guys don't know, there's a... Uh, some crazy shit that happened. If you guys don't know about the cod crash, I'm going to make a whole presentation on um, overfishing and why overfishing is just as big of a problem as pollution. But uh, overfishing is a big problem. And if you guys don't know, let's look at a population graph of cod. So this is cod population through the years. And you'll notice a little something happens with how many cod we are catching right around 2000. And this is the effects of population crash and overfishing. Basically, we catch them to a point where they just cannot, they cannot continue to reproduce and maintain their population because we're overfishing them. And uh, we did that to cod. Now that doesn't necessarily say anything about cod's adaptation. They're still doing okay. They're still, their population is now recovering. There have been some heavy restrictions placed on them, but I also, I, I don't know. I feel like a lot of these fish are gonna be middle of the road, but I have to feel like cod are just, Middle of the road. I think they're below coelacanths, but I don't know that I would put them above much. But they're not D tier. They're well adapted. They had a huge population. It's not their fault that, you know, humans are fuckheads. So I think I'm gonna have to go just right below coelacanth. Next up is carp. I'd say carp are very well adapted. I think no matter, I mean, it's shown by how invasive they are in, in other environments, sort of like lionfish, the next one. I think that they do really well in their environments. They can live just about everywhere. They have a really fucking tough time dying. They um, can adapt to almost any food source, can adapt to almost any predator, uh, can adapt to almost any prey. I think carp are pretty well adapted. I think people believe that they're like a middle of the road fish. A lot of people see them as a middle of the road fish, but I don't think that that's accurate. <clears throat> I think that carp are definitely high tiers. I'm going to put them in A tier. I'm going to put them above tuna. I mean, there's l less of an interest in fishing them, so they're not having to deal with humans as much. They're more adaptive. I think I, I think I have to put them there. I said this at the beginning, I'll say it again. There are going to be very few fish in S tier. There are going to be very few fish in F tier, okay? The top and the bottom tier are only for extremes. This is the best fish. This is literally should not be alive. In fact, this tier might only be here for seahorses. Lionfish. Lionfish, again, if we're talking about native environment, are not like amazing. But if we're talking about invasive, which you have to take into account, I mean, their populations are thriving in invasive environments. Lionfish are doing really, really well. Like, really, really well. Without predators that know how to, like, that have evolved for thousands of years to know how to, like, how to deal with them, they are just dominating. Like, they can eat everything in the area. They can, I mean, basically be immune to most predators because of their spines. I know groupers have been, have been noticing. Uh, we've seen groupers starting to eat them so that nature's kind of coming around and like florida and gulf of mexico type thing fish are starting to adapt to doing so but um you know it's gonna take a while and for now they're really really strong i think for now for now i'm gonna put them in lower a, a tier but i think that as time goes on and as groupers learn how to eat them and as more fish adapt to eat them and as potentially one of their predators from say the south china sea becomes invasive into the gulf of mexico which is going to happen i mean we're, we're working towards like a mesh i mean the environment is working towards just all being the same thing like invasive species are just everywhere like any species that is native somewhere is gonna end up being invasive somewhere else because of how connected the world is and so all of these ecosystems that were once like ecological niches are now just becoming one mesh of like the same thing. So the predators that are, you know, dealing with lionfish in the South China Sea probably will eventually end up doing the same thing in the Gulf of Mexico. All right, next up, mudskippers. I used to love mudskippers. Mudskippers used to be one of my favorite fish. It's a cool adaptation. So if you don't know, mudskippers going, go onto land and like do a lot of shit on land. It's a unique adaptation, but it's not a particularly strong one. That being said, I do know that they, they are invasive and they have some pretty large populations in places where they're not supposed to have 
large populations. But can I justify putting them in A tier? I feel like a fish going onto land is such like a <laughs> a unique and cool adaptation that I almost feel like obligated to put it into A tier at least. But I f I'm feeling B tier. I mean, like if you were going to talk about like the evolution of fish, would you put the tick to lick in fucking B tier? First creature to walk on land. I mean, it's a very cool adaptation. It's just not as significant nowadays. But mudskippers do well for themselves. I think I, I put them above. I think I would put them above lump suckers in B tier. All right, next up we have the electric eel. I mean, I what I've chosen here is like a bunch of unique adaptations. I'm just trying to look at the full spectrum of fish, like all of the different cool things that fish can do. And the reality is that a lot of fish fall into the, uh, the same category, right? They all fall into well adapted to their environments. Not amazing, not bad. They're doing fine for themselves. If there's not a human impact, they're really all just all in that same zone. Electric eels will never be an A tier. They'll never be an A tier. They're a B or C, just the average, the average fish, B or C tier. But would I say they're less adapted than plecos or lump suckers? I'd put them below lump suckers, but above plecos. So I think I'm gonna put them, we'll put them top of C for now. So we, we get more of a foundation in the middle of the tier list. You guys know what's next. <laughs> it's that time. <clears throat> I'm about to give an I have a dream level speech about how much I hate seahorses. The seahorse is so mind-numbingly stupid. I can't even fathom that this creature not only has existed at one point in time, but has continued to exist into modern day. It is genuinely baffling that this has happened. The fact that this thing is still alive and not even doing that poorly genuinely causes me physical pain. I lay in bed at night and have like hot flashes thinking about why seahorses aren't extinct. The only reason that seahorses are not the most maladapted creature to ever exist is because they can camouflage well. If they didn't have camouflage, I think they would be up there for the worst adapted creature to ever evolve to exist. Ever. However, all of this said, they're still alive and they're not doing that poorly. So while it doesn't make sense, they are still doing it, right? Like, they're better than the things that have already gone extinct. <laughs> I'm not putting them above F tier. I hope you I hope you don't think I'm segueing into putting them up because no, fuck. I mean, I'll just put it right now. They are probably going to be alone in F tier. But I don't feel the need to make like an F minus tier because they're doing it, I guess. Next up, manta ray. Manta ray are cool as shit, and it's hard to not be biased against in favor of something that looks cool as shit. But it's such a weird adaptation. It's so like why? You know, a lot of times adaptations feel like they fill really unique ecological niches, allow them to, you know, take up unique food sources or uh, avoid predators in a unique way. But manta rays don't really avoid predators in a unique way. And their food source is shared with a lot of other large fish. So like, what are you doing? Right? I mean, you're just an elongated pancake. They're never going to go extinct. They're way too personable of an animal. If you guys don't know, when it comes to saving species from extinction, uh, humans have what's called personable and non-personable animals. And personable animals are ones that are like cute or beautiful that people like. And those will never go extinct because people will always be willing to put money towards saving personable animals, at least in captivity. And then there's non-personal animals that no one gives a shit about and no one will ever put money towards saving them because they're just not cute. Manta rays are personable, so they'll always be around as long as, you know, humans can keep them around. But they're just fucking, like, what are you doing? For me, manta rays are cool, and they're vibing, but they are the definition of D tier. They're just, eh. They're just, eh. You know? It's just, eh. And with that, we move on to barracuda. And this is barracuda slash pike. I'm gonna group them in the same way that the, that tier zoo did. Barracuda slash pike, both at once. Pretty well adapted. Barracuda and Pike kind of kind of do what uh, they do what they do. I like Barracuda and Pike. They are well adapted for catching fish. They're fast. They work in short bursts. 
They've got the teeth to shred things apart so that they don't have to swallow whole, like a lot of other fish rely on swallowing things whole. They're like, B. I don't have a ton to say about barracuda and pike. Like low B. Maybe I put them above lump suckers. I think I put them above lump suckers. It's time for the moray eel. You guys don't know. My favorite fish is a coelacanth. My separate fi second favorite fish is a paraiba. My third favorite fish is a moray eel. I love the moray eel. I love the moray eel. If you guys watched my reaction to the tier zoo tier list, I literally was like a, a full wave of goodness washed over my body when he put the moray eel in, in S tier. I love them. And I just found out recently that people are scared of them. Like, what the fuck is that? Are you guys scared of moray eels? They're not going to hurt you. Their niche is fucking awesome in the reef. They're very personable. They're extremely intelligent. They have no problems finding food. They're not being too heavily impacted by humans. As far as all fish goes, they're really on the lower side of, of human impact. And for that reason, moray is our first S tier. All right, next up, we have bass. Bass as a whole, and I said this during the Tierzu video, I don't remember where Tierzu put bass. Tierzu put bass in like B or A tier, and I was baffled, okay? Let me explain something to you guys. Being the biggest fish with no predators in a pond is so much more advantageous than being an, uh, an apex predator in the ocean. There is so much more food there's so much like of a smaller, easier to manage environment. Not to mention bass have humans looking out for them. We purposely introduce bass into new areas so that we can fish them. We can catch and release fish them. Bass are literally the perfect, like almost the perfect fish build. I mean, bass literally can exist in any ecosystem, dominate the ecosystem, be the top predator, eat everything below them without issue. And they have the support of humans. Humans are actively helping bass be grow their population and be more successful as a species. And when you have humans helping you, I mean, come on. Bass are S tier. And they're above mores. Cleaner wrasse. I love cleaner wrasse, if you guys don't know. Cleaner wrasse are very, very cool fish. Their niche, if you don't know, is sharks and other fish that have parasites that often latch onto them, will stop in, take a rest by the reef. The cleaner wrasse will come through, pick off the little parasites. It's a, you know, symbiotic relationship. Sharks swim away. I believe they were they were put pretty low. Tierzu put them pretty, okay, so I think what Tierzu said in his list was that because they have like a very um, Im imbalanced relationship, right? So like their entire existence relies on the sharks that they're cleaning not eating them. But like, how com I really don't think it's that common of, of, an, of an existence or really that common of an, of an occurrence that a, a shark would eat them. It just doesn't make sense. Uh, yeah, as far as support glasses go, I don't think it gets much better than the cleaner wrasse. They've got it made. Uh, they're, they're A tier. They're not above lionfish. So they're not immune, but but they're A tier for sure. They're definitely above mud skippers. So let's, let's, let's do a little bit of a speed round, all right? Sea robins, for the exact same reason that tier, tiers who put them in D tier, they're in, they're in D tier. Flying is a cool adaptation, but it's so stupid. I mean, it's just so stupid. They think they're so quirky. They think they're so unique. They just fucking jump out of the water and the predators are just like, yeah, okay. And then they just follow them. And then they land back in the water and the predators just eat them. And it's like, oh, well, that was fucking worthless. Ocean sunfish D tier. They do not deserve the slander that tier zoo gave them. They are not an F tier fish. They are doing their best. But they still kind of fucking suck. Marlin are not S tier. Marlin are high B, probably, at best. I mean, yeah, they're fast. Yeah, they got the sword nose, but it's totally based on burst. And they take so much time to recharge. And the spear isn't even that good at its job. I think they're high B, low A, for sure. All right, next up, great white. Ah, uh, great whites. Great whites are difficult not to put in S tier, but I don't think that they can be S tier. Because <clears throat> there's a shark that I think is more well adapted than, than great whites. 
And so it would be weird to have two sharks in S tier because then the implication is then it's just like, well, sharks are just good. And it's like, yeah, sharks are good. Sharks are really fucking good at what they do. But I'm not going to put every shark in S tier. I think great whites are top of A for sure. They're on the verge. They are, they're incredibly strong. They're apex predator. They're adapted to a lot of different food sources. They're adapted to a lot of different environments. They're extremely intelligent. Um, they do suffer pretty hard at the hands of humans. Humans do not do very well for them, but they're doing their best. And now for the S tier shark, I did say that there is a shark that is an S tier and it is the hammerhead shark. And I will tell you guys a fun thing about the hammerhead shark. For a long time before I actually learned a lot about fish, I thought that hammerhead sharks were poorly adapted. I thought hammerhead sharks were the result of evolution going too far, you know? You have a wider head, you get more electromagnetic or electroreception. And I thought hammerheads were just the extreme of electroreception. But it turns out that electroreception is not only good, they have nearly 360 eyesight, and the way that their head is shaped, so their head is actually perfectly shaped to allow them to do quick direction changes, to push water past their body in essentially the most efficient way possible. It's a heat map of the pressure of water going past their head when they swim. <clears throat> so for a long time, I thought this head was really stupid. It's actually a really amazing adaptation. And hammerheads are the S-tier shark. And I think they are just the best example. They take everything that sharks do well and do it the best. All right, next up, pufferfish. It's interesting. It doesn't really stop a lot of predators as much as it should. I mean, you would think exploding and having like spines and all that would stop predators, but it doesn't do as good of a job as it probably should. But it still does, it does deter a decent amount of predators. It's just not, I feel like if evolution was like something that like people thought about, you know, like the animals thought about, I feel like pufferfish thought they were really onto something. They were like, oh yeah, blowing up with spines, we're fucking set and um didn't turn out that well i'm gonna have to put them in low c they're not horrible they're they're vibing they're vibing but they're not doing amazing all right next up is thresher shark probably one of my favorite fish i mean you gotta fucking you can't not love the the thresher shark using your tail like a whip to stun fish so that you don't have to chase them is so cool it's so cool and it works well Fish, if you guys don't know, are really uh, susceptible to being stunned. Like a lot of the ways that fishermen will kill fish or stun them when they catch them is that bonk over the head. So the thresher shark taking advantage of that is really good. Really good. They're definitely an underrated shark. I know a lot of like shark people like them, but outside of like actual shark people, not a lot of people know about them. However, they're just not quite the predator that great whites are. Um, and to be honest, I think carp might have an up on them, but they're above tuna for sure. So I think they're in between carp and tuna because I think carp's adaptivity just can't be overstated. What do we got next? Salmon. In Tier Zoo's video, when I reacted to Tier Zoo's video, I defended salmon pretty hard because their adaptation is as a species. If you guys didn't understand what I was saying, a lot of salmon get eating, eaten when they do their upstream voyage to get back to their breeding spot. And Tier Zoo viewed this as a negative thing for the individual, which it is. However, for the species as a whole, that trip is really, really, really important. And the fact that a lot of them get eaten is important because it means that only the strongest, the most adapted make it back to the greeting browns to breed, right? You cannot be a shittily adapted salmon, a weak salmon, and make it to breeding. You just won't make it through your whole life cycle. It's too difficult. So salmon remain as a very purely bred species because of that. However, as an individual, which is how we're trying to do this tier list, they do pretty shittily. A lot of them get eaten, and salmon as a whole are facing extinction because of human dams and uh, other types of uh, ways of dealing with rivers. If you guys don't know, dams are almost 100% bad. There's some times where you can, you can justify the electricity created based on like the impact of a small dam, but dams are genuinely pretty pointless and pretty horrible and they stop salmon populations from migrating back upstream and reproducing, uh, which means that salmon are kind of getting fucked by humans. They're getting eaten on the way. And if you're gonna, if you're gonna view them as uh, individuals, you know, I think they're, they're high D tier at best. All right, we're down to one row. One row left to add. 
we're starting with white suckers. Now, this is a species that probably not a lot of you guys know about, but I have a lot of experience with. I personally have caught white suckers in nets during surveys and everything. Um, and they're smart as shit. Uh, yeah, white suckers are a very unique adaptation to, to streams. And I feel like we needed to talk about streams. I feel like we needed to talk about something from a stream ecosystem because I feel like it gets overlooked a lot. We talk about ponds. We talk a lot about the ocean. We talk about rivers, but like small local streams, minnows and small species like suckers are thriving. I mean, they take over that environment, right? And they're doing amazing in that environment. Um, but they often get overlooked because they're small and because their environment isn't very large. Like I'm talking about streams that are so small that like you're not going to find bass and you're barely going to find like sunfish or anything like that. They are thriving in those ecosystems, those small stream ecosystems. With that in consideration, with the ecosystem that they're trying to adapt to, and with my bias towards white suckers because I personally like them a lot, I am putting them in the middle of B tier. I can't put them above a barracuda, but I can put them above a lump sucker. Next up, we have Arapaima. Arapaima is probably my fourth favorite fish. I love Arapaima. Uh, if you don't know, Arapaima are just these massive, ridiculously strong, beautiful, beautiful fish. Um, if you haven't seen the Jeremy Wade episode, I highly recommend watching the Jeremy Wade episode on Arapaima. However, as awesome as Arapaima are, they are having a pretty rough time with humans. The aquarium trade is helping a little bit, but humans are doing humans are doing a, a very bad job. But really what they are is just the generalist apex predator of an environment, you know, just being the largest species that can eat anything in there, adapt to their environment. It's a niche that a lot of things fill. I like later we're going to look at the Goliath grouper. Goliath grouper fills the same niche, fills the same purpose. But, um, eh, it's not, it's not particularly amazing. It's just a general, generalist thing. I think it's, it's a, a good, like, definition C tier. Next up is the goblin shark. I don't fucking know. What do you do with a goblin shark? You know what? We're going to leave this to, this one's a chat vote. I'm going to finally let you guys decide because I have absolutely zero thoughts on the goblin shark. So it seems like the consensus is high C, low B. I'm fine with that. We'll put them below lump suckers, bubble electric eels. Totally fine. Flounder. I want to talk about flounder because I love flounder. If you guys don't know, flounder have adapted to have both of their eyes on the same side of their head, right? So like, whereas most animals will have their eyes facing forward or facing to the side. So, you know, predators tend to have eyes facing forward. Prey tend to have eyes facing to the side. Flounder said, fuck that, and removed their right eye and just put it right here. So they could just, two eyes on the same side of their head. Pretty awesome. They're great ambush predators. They are great at camouflage, uh, hiding under the sand. Uh, they have a lot of unique adaptations. The two eyes on one side of the head thing. I mean, who the fuck thought of that? That's cool. Humans eat them, which can be a bad thing. But in this case, it means that we actually have a, a vested interest in their survival which kind of makes us eating them a good thing. Um, they're not going to go extinct. I think flounder have a lot going for them. I think flounder are definitely above marlin, probably below cleaner wrasse. I think I put them high B. All right, next up we have freshwater sunfish. I talked about how we weren't looking, like people weren't thinking enough when they talked about fish, they weren't talking about stream environments enough. One of those is uh, pumpkin seed sunfish. Pumpkin seed sunfish kind of rule their environments in like small streams and areas like that, just like the suckers do. Um, they're not anything special. You know, they're not doing amazing, but they are, um, they're ruling the environment that they're in. I mean, you, you can't, I, when you're talking about an objective tier list of how well things are adapted to their environment and how well they're surviving, a fish that's thriving in a small stream ecosystem is just as well adapted as a fish that is thriving in like, a, uh, the ocean, like, you know, the open ocean. Uh, so yeah, sunfish are just kind of middle of the road. They're less adapted than plecos. They're probably better than coelacanth. I'll put them there. I'll put them right above coelacanth. Piranhas. Piranhas are a very cool adaptation. You see fish adapt into shoals and schools pretty often, um, working together, you know, in favor of working alone as a species. 
but you don't see the level of cooperation that piranhas have often. <clears throat> now, I don't think piranhas are amazing. Piranhas are definitely overrated. I definitely agree with you guys in that. However, the ability to join as a group and uh, basically remove all of the flesh from something essentially instantly is a pretty good adaptation. It means they pretty much always have a food source. However, they get shit on by everything in their in their natural environment. I mean, everything around them eats them. It's a little rough to put them anywhere successful. I think bottom of B. Bottom of B, top of C. I think I'm gonna put them top of C. I don't know that I want them to crest into B tier. Next up is Orfish. Now, if you guys don't know, I have a particularly vested interest in Orfish. In fact, if you go to YouTube and you look up Orfish, this is my documentary that I made two years ago about Orfish. This was actually my first video on this channel, on the AVNJ channel, was my documentary about Orfish. So I have a particular interest in, in Orfish. I really like them. They're very cool looking. They're very mysterious. The whole like predicting an earthquake thing is really cool. But like, uh, like what do they have that's so, I feel like they don't have anything special. I think they're just middle of the road. I think like everything else, like a lot of these other fish, they're just middle of the road. I think I put them in between cod and puffer fish. Gar are interesting. Now, if you guys like gar, a lot of people really like gar. They're a very personable fish as far as fish goes. You guys need to check out uh, Dr. Solomon David. He's a friend of mine. This dude is the fucking world expert on gar. The man runs something called the Gar Lab. He has job openings. If you guys are qualified and you like gar, he has job openings at his lab working with gar. Gar are A tier easily. But where in A tier do I put Gar? I think they're in between Tuna and Thresher Shark. I think their predatory abilities are really well adapted. I think they're a really cool fish. I think they have a bright future and they have humans protecting them. But they're not so unique and well adapted that I, I would put them really, really top. Now Sturgeon. I mean, you gotta love armor, right? <laughs> they're big, they got armor. Their food source is really cool and unique. However, do they have much beyond that? I feel like sturgeon are the kind of fish that you look at and you're like, yeah, they're cool, but like, eh. I think they have to go above Arapaima because they're doing what Arapaima do in a larger, on a larger, more successful scale. But I don't think they can go much higher than Arapaima. I think they have to be below sunfish. And it is weird to say that a sturgeon is less well adapted than a freshwater sunfish, but I, I think that's genuinely how it is. All right, hagfish. What the fuck is it? Why? I mean, why does this exist? It's not F tier because, I mean, obviously they have some really cool adaptations with their, you know, slime and everything. But like, why does this have to exist? They are... Fuck, I'm putting so much in C tier. They're there, probably. Fake fish, yeah. It's like doing a planet tier list and including Pluto. I'm sorry, it's fake news. Clownfish. Now, if you guys don't know, I love fish. Uh, fish are awesome. And uh, I wouldn't often say negative things about fish. What I'm saying, I, I just want to preface this, I'm speaking only from my own experience. Every clownfish I have ever met has been a fucking asshole. Clownfish are so rude. I mean, they just go out of their way to do the things that piss you off the most. I swear they know. However, they're really well adapted. They do some cool shit. They do the gender transition, if you guys don't know. The biggest one in the group will switch genders and acquire that role. They have a cool symbiotic relationship with sea anemones. They do well in reefs. I mean, they're like a B-tier fish, but they are assholes. <laughs> God damn, they are assholes. I cannot stand them. I think they're like here. Goliath grouper. Maybe my fifth favorite fish. I love Goliath groupers. If you guys don't know, where lionfish are invasive in like Florida, Gulf of Mexico area, Groupers are actually the fish learning how to deal with them. 
Goliath groupers are fucking massive. If you guys don't have a sense of scale, I mean like literally like human sized or more massive. Um, they are just like top of the food chain, fish, doing what they do, being well adapted. I don't think you can get much better than uh, much better than a Goliath grouper. I'm tempted to put him in S tier. Is that bad? Should I feel guilty for being tempted to put him in S tier? All right, you guys are giving me permission. They're bottom of S, though. They're bottom of S. They're bottom of S, okay? It's okay. They'd be high A or bottom of S. All right, shovel-nosed catfish. I'm now regretting adding the shovel-nosed catfish because it's kind of underwhelming in between a whale shark and a goliath grouper. But, um, I mean, shovel nose is just a cool-ass adaptation. I'm a big catfish fan. I like paraiba. Paraiba are often interbred with shovel nose catfish. Like low C tier, I guess. Well, no, they might... Nah, they're low C tier. I put them here. And last but not least, the whale shark. It's a lot of people's favorite fish. It's the largest fish. Shark, whale sharks are very personable because they're so large. They seem to show that, like, emotion. But I don't think that they're so well adapted that they could be an S tier. They're like a low A, high B, I think. I can't justify putting a whale shark above a, a, a lionfish. I'll put them above a cleaner wrasse, but I cannot justify putting a whale shark above a lionfish. And there, my friends, is our fish tier list.